So we got a DR stump grinder here. It's got the 301 cc OHV engine, basically a Honda clone engine on this. Customer brought it in, said the crankcase is full of fuel. He had this issue before and had to wait for months, he said, on DR to try to find a carburetor. They didn't have any available, so he basically just got an aftermarket online. Uh, not sure why it took them so long to figure out what kind of carb they needed because this here engine is basically just a Honda clone. I mean, you can use those standard carburetors they sell online all over the place for these units. Now, normally this happens because you're using just regular pump fuel on it. If we look down in there, what do we see? Basically black. Very, very cloudy. You can't see to the bottom or anything like that and the gas is black. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but you can see some black flecks at the bottom of the screen here also. So looks like he's got some issues maybe with the fuel tank or can he's using, getting some pieces of some rubber in it that are making it down pass through. And that could be what's gumming up the carburetor. But I'm gonna show you how to get this taken care of. Uh, normally when they leak, we're not gonna go ahead and try to clean them or anything like that. We're just gonna replace the carburetor, but I'll show you how to flush out the system and everything like that and get this thing taken care of. And again, this is basically just a Honda clone engine. They put these things on everything. Uh, a lot of them are rated 240 or 270 cc. This one's rated 301. I think they sell a 340 and a 390 maybe also. But if the crank's full of fuel, first thing you want to do is start to get all that stuff out of there. So easiest way on something like this make sure you have a fire extinguisher handy you never know when a uh, some stray static electricity will catch go ahead and light you up you don't want that for sure now it's already starting to drip and i'm barely even starting to open it at this point so it's definitely completely full of fuel and there it goes leaking all over the place. So as we're getting this emptied out, we're gonna go ahead and just take the top cover here off the air cleaner. Hopefully I got enough room left in that container. Looks like it's getting pretty well full. We're gonna get down to the carburetor so we can get it replaced. Looks like we're almost there. bringing the camera down a little bit at the same time. Much more and we're going to be all over the table apparently. It does still have some left so it could still be drip, dripping down through. We're going to go ahead and stop right there that way we don't get it all over the place. Dump that. Finish it up here in a few but the next thing we want to do is get to the carburetor here. Dump this just off camera here real quick. Get it out of the way, that way we don't spill it all over the place. Now that stuff, if it lights up, it'll burn pretty good. It'll, <clears throat> it's not exactly real explosive, but it's definitely something that's gonna burn real good. So, again, fire extinguisher, definitely safety first on something like this. And dump it back just the rest of the way real quick and see if I can't get what's left out of it. It looks pretty well empty. I'm going to do it once again here. And we always will run these again after we get everything switched out and then we'll drain the oil again to get any of that residual gas that we couldn't get out. I like to shake it around a little bit from side to side. See if I can't get it to slosh out there. 
Looks like we're pretty well empty at that point. So next the carburetor comes off here. So we do have the, the fuels at the off position here so it can't drain anymore. Should have probably checked that before I went too much further. We're gonna go ahead and take the top. There's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds the air cleaner cover on here. And then you've got two that hold the carburetor on the front. Those are two nuts on the front. And then in order to get this assembly off, you've got to have the fuel shut to off and you've got to have it to choke. Now, right this second, we're not going to be able to do that because if you go to do it, it's in the way. You can't do that with that being in the way. No matter, let's see here, if we try to force it or anything like that, it's not going to come off. So what you've got to do is you've got to A, take the, a lot of times people will try to take the spacers out here. You can see these spacers. They'll go all the way through if you try to work them through. And sometimes that'll work. Sometimes you can get that to, uh, to have you enough room to get that out. What I like to do is I like to actually pull the carburetor all the way forward here. And then I like to go ahead and take the stud out. So if you get a pair, nice pair of channel lock or vice grip pliers, something with a lot of grip to it, you can get in there and you can get get it started and you can go ahead and just work that thing out. So we're just gonna screw the stud all the way out until it's out of our way. Now I believe this one will clear. I hope it does on this side. It's kind of looking like it's not going to at this point, but I'm not too worried about it. Once it gets out, I should be able to flip this whole thing up and, and take it out of there anyway. So this is one of the things that people get, I think, most confused about on something like this is they're like, oh, well, hey, how do I get to that? Well, you can take this whole engine off. You can do that. You can take the handle off or the handle loose. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but in my opinion, taking the stud out is the easiest, most simple way to do it. Once we take this stud out, the whole thing will just kind of rotate. I'll show you here. We're getting closer. You want you don't want to get to the threads, so you don't damage those. You want to stay forward towards the carb here. We're almost there. Okay. All right, so we've got it here. Now we can't take this stud all the way out the front because there's a and a larger part here than it is here, so it won't go past the carb. But we can pull it forward and get it to come off. So now we've got the unit off the air cleaner assembly. Now we've got our spacer. I like to just put those back in there. That way you don't lose them, you know where they go. So we can take it all off one piece by one piece at this point. Looks like he put a front gasket here even though it has the rubber on both sides. No big deal, kind of a universal thing, but we're gonna take the fuel line off at this point. We're gonna go ahead and start draining this into a container, get all that fuel that's in the tank out of the way. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into a fuel, another fuel line here and go into a bucket. Now it actually looks pretty clean coming out over on that side right this second, so. But I am, as far as the spring and stuff goes, you can pull it straight up and towards the camera or to the left if you're looking at the unit. And then you wanna, you wanna work this uh, throttle plate back and you wanna hold it to the left while you pull the governor linkage up and out. So it just comes right up and out of there. From there, we can rotate the whole thing and it will come off on this side. All right. So easier said than done, you know, it's not exactly the easiest thing to do, but it's not super difficult either this way. I think every other way you do it, it is more difficult than doing it this way anyway. Looks like the other gasket and stuff behind there is still good. If the one at the back is, if this insulator is loose or anything like that, I like to go ahead and pull it also and go ahead and replace the gasket behind but in this case it looks like everything's in good shape so we're not going to mess with it whatsoever we are going to go ahead and take that plug out 
and make sure that there's not still a bunch of fuel inside the combustion chamber. So, I usually loosen it and then I do it the rest of the way with my hands because a lot of times your valve cover gets in the way and you're not able to get it and it'll start cross threading that spark plug as you're taking it out. I see a lot of issues with this where people will comment something like that where, oh well the spark plug is hard to get out. Yeah, do it by hand after you get it loose. Don't try to sit there and force it with a spark plug wrench when a lot of times it'll throw it at, a, at, a, at an angle and start to take it out and cross thread it. Yes, there's very, very little room here, especially for large hands. So I don't see anything in there. You gotta be very careful if you're trying to clean this out. What you can do a lot of times is you can just throw this back to anywhere that there's ground at. That way it doesn't spark. And you pull that over just a little bit. You wanna be very careful here because you can start a fire very easily doing this. Especially when you got a bunch of fuel just sitting around. Doesn't look like there's anything in the combustion chamber so I'm not worried about it. This is a torch plug. The only good place for a torch plug is in the trap. We're gonna throw a BPR 6ES in it. So, that's the best thing to use in my opinion on any of these engines here. Any of the Honda clones. I'm gonna throw it back in. What we're gonna do at this point is we're going to grab a carburetor. Now we've got a replacement here. It is an aftermarket. It's not an OEM um, DR, which I'm sure DR probably just uses. It's hard telling who they use for their OEM supplier, but they could be using a Huahi or some other brand, but it doesn't really matter. Honestly, they're pretty much the same thing across the board. So Same thing when tightening it back up. You don't want to do that with the plug wrench all the way. You only want to do that the last little bit. Finish tightening it up. Put it back on. And we'll get a carb and get this thing fixed up. So I went ahead and grabbed the carb. <clears throat> Again, this is just a aftermarket replacement for something like this. This is a part number for reference is a 16100 dash ZF6 dash V01. Now this carburetor, it's got a little inlet cover for the fuel line, which is kind of cool. None of them ever do. But if we come over and look at the fuel here, fuel is completely black. So definitely an issue with fuel. Looks like, uh, I'm not sure if that's rubber or what exactly it is that's, you know, caused that to go bad to that extent, but. Let's go ahead and, we always check the carburetor, whether you're dealing with an aftermarket or an OEM, you always want to check it. You never know the quality of the unit. You never know if there's going to be metal shavings or anything like that in there. I'm not seeing anything in this one. I always like to check the level of the float which looks good in this one this isn't adjustable anyway so it is what it is but we'll go ahead and blow that out real quick make sure if there were any pieces of debris or anything like that down in there that all that's taken care of you can also turn it on and blow down through your inlet that'll get anything out of there i'll put this thing back together and now as far as the fuel goes, we want to address this fuel tank. We want to make sure that none of that stuff is going to be able to get back up through there and stay in that tank to where we're going to have issues with this new carburetor. So I'm going to do that here before we get the carburetor put back on. And I need to basically tip it to the backhand side. That way we're getting a, a little bit better angle as far as draining the fuel goes. So I'm just draining it back, trying to get everything out of there. Looks like they're still a little bit dripping, but no big deal. Go ahead and take that out of there. Take the screen out. I'm gonna look down in. 
Doesn't look like there's a whole lot left down in there, but there is some, and there's definitely some uh, pieces of debris down in there, that's for sure. Put this up underneath. Yeah, so it's not one to come, and I, I think that's just because of those pieces of debris blocking that. There is a little filter inside the tank there, so the pieces of debris are actually blocking the fuel from coming out at this point. What little bit is left. Get a good flow for a second, and then it stops again. Again, there's not a ton left, but there is some for sure. So it seems like every time we blow those little pieces back through that filter into the tank, it'll drain a little bit more down through there and then it'll stop again because they're plugging back up that screen. So each and every time you do it. Didn't really look like there was that much still left in the tank. We'll get all that out of there and then we'll blow out that tank real good. Now if you don't have compressed air at this point, <clears throat> you can take the tank off and go ahead and clean it out that way. That's another easy way to do it. <clears throat> you can also run some good fuel down through the other side, but some way that stuff's going to have to come out of that tank. You can't leave that in there. You'll continue to have issues if that's the case. That's a lot of stuff still down in there. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Not sure. Looks like we got some fuel on the camera. Don't want that to happen. This one's kind of a little bit of a tricky one just because of the angle that it's sitting at. Still quite a bit in there. So I'm going to go ahead and use an extractor to pull that from the top. And basically all this does is just create the suction and sucks that fuel down into it. just want every single bit that you can possibly get out of here out because anything left over will end up getting through that screen at some point. It always works its way down. And then you'll be right back in the same boat where it's just going to flood back through because that's getting in between the needle and the seat. Now I will go ahead and open this other one. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Yeah, so all that black, all that debris, and it looks like, yeah, this is just kind of a cheap replacement also, but it's just got all kinds of debris down in it, so let's see what that needle looks like up in there. Doesn't look horrible. It sure doesn't. It doesn't look too old. 
Looks like he was using a halfway decent gas, but unfortunately if you've got a, and this may be an issue with the fuel line even. We're gonna take this fuel line off of here. We're gonna replace it while we're right here also. Just to make sure that that black is not being contributed to by the fuel line. Now we know that's not the case in the tank because from the fuel line it wouldn't get in the tank, but all we're gonna do is replace this line. So we've got the <clears throat> new fuel line here. We'll cut it to size once we get to that point, but we're gonna go ahead and blow this out, blow back through. Make sure that this thing is 100% cleared out as far as the tank goes before we go any further. doing is just kind of working around in circles here making sure that the whole thing is going to be cleared out by the end of it all go back up through the other way also and if you're looking down in you want to make sure that all that stuff any kind of debris that's in there is out by the time you're done. Now we've got it basically dry at this point, so all we're trying to do is push that stuff around so it flows up and out the top there. And you can just move it in and out all around, and eventually it's gonna come up out of the top. So especially once it's dry, it'll start to push it up and out. And we'll make sure that he knows that his tank or whatever he's using to hold his gas in it's definitely got some debris in it. So now... So I don't see anything else up in the tank whatsoever. It's 100% clean. I'm going to put our fuel line back on. Again, it's kind of hard to reach doing this, so if you feel more comfortable, you can take the fuel tank off. Now, and that's if you don't have a air compressor too. It's only a couple bolts. You've got a bolt here, you've got two on the side, and then a bolt on the back side. And that whole tank will come up and off of there. Make it a little bit easier for you if you don't have the tools you need to do this without that. And again, this is a general use Honda clone engine. Very common. We are going to go ahead and replace the gasket that sits behind the carburetor there. Now, if you don't replace that gasket, a lot of times you'll get an air leak and you'll run into issues. So, then your unit won't run right. Now, you want to make sure all this stuff is clean on the back side. It looks dirtier than it is here, but if there's any big chunks or anything like that, you want to get those off for sure. And you will have to use the piece from the old one. If the new one doesn't come with it, it just flips up and off. <laughs> okay, so we got a little better view here. Obviously, it's back on. Fuel is to off. I'm going to, going to go ahead and put the stud back in. And we'll flip it upside down. And we basically just want to push here slightly and get it started. And then it can rotate once it's in. So now we're good there. We can go ahead and put our front gasket here. Get it started. All right. And then we can get the front assembly. Now on this, it's kind of harder to line up. You got to kind of push everything back further that pushed in. I like to just line up the back side, the bottom piece anyway. And then the front one, 
we rotate a little bit more Oop. that's not working i'm not worried about the back gasket right now we don't want it hooked up that way we don't rip it or anything like that so all right so let's get the front one here done first or the closest to us and then we'll work on the one furthest away all right now I'm back down through perfect everything lines up great at that point and you just kind of got to work at it you can also get the back side here now if you want and get it started as soon as that gets started you can pull the whole unit towards you and you can go ahead and get the linkage on the back side now so see if I can't get a little better view from the other side getting this linkage done let's see here best way to do this would probably be from maybe above so yeah, that doesn't look too bad now as far as the linkage if you pull it down towards you and push straight down in you can get your governor linkage started and then as far as the spring goes you just pull it to the left a little bit and get it right down into that hole and push straight down in i didn't quite get it but it's real close there at this point all right perfect so now that that's there and everything's good to go we're going to go ahead and put the fuel line back on and with the fuel line it just pushes straight on We've got the clamp already on it at the tip. I went ahead and cut it back just a smidge for the size it needed to be. So now we can push everything together and everything's hooked up right. Now you do want to check the governor if it's moving right. That's great. If it's on high, it should spring back real good. And it is, so that's great. Let's get back over here to our other side. Again, the governor, it should spring back good if we're on high throttle, and it does like it should we've got our assembly here we've got our back gasket there intact everything's good except for this isn't all the way tightened down so you got to be more careful when you're putting this back in as you don't want to ruin that gasket on the back side if you do you're gonna have to take the whole thing back apart again so don't want to do that or at least i don't <laughs> not the easiest thing and again you can you can go ahead and do this by taking apart that whole engine and taking it off removing your belts and everything with this in my opinion is much much easier than doing it the other way so doesn't mean it's easy in general but easier than the other alternatives and i'm just taking grip by grip piece by piece here push everything back together get our breather tube back in okay see if I can find all the uh, yep, bolt for the top get it started and then we've got the two nuts for the front that go back on Tighten those down. Okay, we'll put our air filter back on. from here is to get a little bit of oil and a little bit of gas in it and it'll be ready to go we use a 10w30 synthetic blend for that
And again, we're just gonna fill this up and then after we run it for a few minutes, we're gonna change it again. Get all that stuff burnt on through, flushed out into the, into the oil. Takes about a quarter right close to it. Not real, uh, real big deal as far as the level goes right now. As long as you got enough in it to run it, because you are going to be again changing it. Throw some fuel in. And turn the fuel on. Now my throttle control isn't working at this point. Okay, so the throttle control is stuck, and that means that this bolt right here is too tight. This throttle control should spring back when you let go of the handle up top here. There it is, now it's working good. You don't want that to stick for sure when you're operating this. Okay, operator presence control. And we'll go ahead and give it a whirl. in here definitely needs to burn all that additional stuff off but short of burning that off and running it for a minute and switching back out the oil <clears throat> everything's good to go just look at all that stuff <coughs> coming out of the exhaust there and all the smoke in here it's kind of crazy but uh, that should get your DR stump grinder back up or, and going or any Honda clone engine like this should take care of all the issues you need with a new carb and with the uh handle in the way it adds kind of a twist but nothing you can't overcome with a little bit of ingenuity so thanks for watching like and subscribe